This is the new 2023 Range Rover SV long wheelbase, and it's amazing. This is the most luxurious Range Rover you can buy with a sticker price in the $250,000 range. And it's been completely redesigned, totally new from the Range Rover that we've known for the last 10 years. And today, I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bins, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bins. And we've had some great sales recently, including this 80 series Toyota Land Cruiser, which brought $33,000. These are shooting up in value. This 993 Porsche 911 Cabriolet sold for $120,000. Great money for a great car and this Shelby GT350 brought almost $54,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it, with daily auctions and great selection at carsandbids.com. So let's talk new Range Rover. The old Range Rover came out a decade ago, so it was time for a new one, and that's exactly what we have here, completely redesigned. The base version of this Range Rover starts a little over $100,000, and there's now a plug-in hybrid model available, or you can just step all the way up to this, the SV, the king of the Range Rover Hill, with a $200,000 plus sticker price and a big V8 under the hood. And today, I'm going to show you everything. First, I'll take you on a thorough tour of the new Range Rover and show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of this new Range Rover in the incredibly luxurious back seat. This is the top of the line SV long wheelbase model and the stretched wheelbase is all found in the back. You can see the rear door is absolutely massive compared to the front door. It's just incredibly huge. And that is to make the rear compartment as large and luxurious as possible. And indeed you climb back here here and you can see opulent luxury. Absolutely amazing. Tons of space, beautiful seats, materials, looks like the finest first class accommodations on a luxury airline. That's because this particular Range Rover has the four seater package, which takes away the typical boring rear bench seat and adds in this luxurious rear treatment instead. It costs almost $20,000 extra and it comes with some truly amazing quirks and features. So let's get started. For one thing, cup holders. They're under this little panel here in the center console. And in most cars, you just tap on the panel, it opens up, and that's where you put your drinks, but not in this one. Instead, you go into this little screen, as you can see here, and there's an icon with a drink on it. You press the icon, and then the panel moves out of the way electronically and reveals the cup holders. Even accessing the cup holders is luxurious in this car, and it gets crazier. No luxurious rear compartment would be complete without a refrigerator. And there's one located in between the two seats. You can see this big piece here, that's the refrigerator, but how do you access it? Well, instead of a traditional handle, once again, go into this center screen, press the fridge app, and then you go in and tap the open icon, and then the refrigerator door automatically opens up, again, electronically. So you don't have to do anything like pull on it, you just do it all with your screen. And then there's the table. This vehicle of course has a table because it's intended for chauffeur driven rear passengers who might need to use a laptop or eat while being driven around. And so to access the table you go into the screen and tap this little icon here which looks kind of like a table and then it rises up automatically from the center console and your table is delivered to you. From there you slide the table back toward you and then flip open its little hinged piece
place and your table is now in place and you deployed it with the push of a button. Now, to put the table away, you refold it back into place, slide it forward, and then once again, press the table icon and it automatically drops back down into the center console purely electronically in your luxury rear seat. And check out this cool feature in the center screen, opening or closing the sunroof sunshade. In most cars, just a little switch you press and the sunshade opens or closes. In this car, it's in the screen and it shows the exact current position of the sunroof sunshade corresponding to where it actually is. And then you just slide your finger forward or backward in order to move the sunshade to the position you want it, which is an amazing benefit for people in the rear seats. And speaking of the rear seat, there is quite a bit to cover with the seats themselves. Now, if you want to adjust the seats, you have a few controls on the door panel you can see here, but this merely scratches the surface of what you can do with the seats. You go into the Seats app in the center screen and you can see a truly unbelievable level of adjustment. You can tap anywhere, any of these little dots on the seat, and you can adjust that piece from the headrest all the way down to the footrest. It's all adjustable and controllable within your screen. You can even tap on the footrest and then press deploy and watch the front passenger seat start to move forward and out of the way so that it can maximize your rear seat room and go all the way forward to give you as much space as possible and then finish by deploying your footrest so that you have a place to sit back here. Now obviously you can only do that on the rear passenger side. You can't mess with the driver's seating position but if you're sitting over here you can push the front passenger seat as far forward as you want to maximize your seating position. And it gets better because these rear seats also have a massaging function. As you can see in the center screen, you can turn on rear seat massage while you're being driven along and you have heated and cooled rear seats as well. Although oddly, it's both accessed under the seat heat tab. You tap on that and then you can control both heat and cool, which is strangely mislabeled. But who really cares when you're coddled by such wonderful luxury. And by the way, one other cool thing about moving that front seat forward, when you finish adjusting the position of that front seat, the rear screen mounted on the back of that seat automatically adjusts its angle to be optimal for the rear seat passenger. So every time you adjust the front seat, the rear screen compensates for your adjustment by changing its angle automatically, which is very cool. And by the way, speaking of those rear screens, one on each side for each rear passenger, and you can turn them on by using the center screen, which can activate them. Once they are on, they're touch screens for the rear passengers. And you can see on one side, like your navigation destination, the other allows for external input if you want to watch stuff on your screens. And that's sort of the purpose of those rear screens and back. But moving back to the center screen, which has far more interesting controls, go to the lighting tab and you have quite a few options back here. You can control the overall lighting in the vehicle, the sort of ambiance, general lighting, the color, the intensity. You can even animate the lighting so that it kind of changes changes colors while you're driving around, which is pretty incredible. But that's not your only lighting option back here. You can also tap on task lighting and use that to turn on your reading light in back or also your computer light, which I guess are two different things with different intensities and different position. And then you can have those lights on to add some lighting if you want to do some work or read while you're being chauffeured along. Also controllable back here in the center screen is the climate control. No real surprise there. Nothing too unusual, except that you can choose whether you want it to purify the air or not. That's selectable back here. Not sure why you wouldn't want that, but you have the option if you want. But beyond the rear center screen and all of its controllability, there is still more craziness back here. So let's move on to the door panel and specifically the window switch. Power window switch, you press it, window goes down, pretty simple. If the window is already up and you pull on it again, then a sunshade automatically raises up from the door panel and and shields you from the sun, which is a nice luxurious touch. But there is still more. You have this little button next to the window control. Press that and you can see an arrow lights up pointing to now the other side of the car. Well, now you're controlling the window over on the other side. So a rear chauffeur driven passenger can choose to raise or lower each window at his or her discretion and it gets better because if you tap 
it again, you're now controlling both windows at once, and you can lower or raise the windows or the sunshades at once with the push of one button back here, you've turned it on. Also in this area, you can see other controls for your lights. This is the task lighting I mentioned earlier, easier controls on the door panel if you just want to tap on a button and turn it on rather than go into the screen. But anyway, next up, another wonderful quirk back here is the rear seat headrests, which as you can see are pillowy and soft and a nice place to lay your head and they adjust around your head. You can kind of put them in place to fit around your head and so you have extra head support from these headrests, which is a pretty cool touch. But aside from all the amazing luxury amenities and quirks and features back here, it's also just beautiful. The materials are absolutely fantastic. Leather, stitching, gorgeous trim everywhere. You have these thick floor mats you can really sink your feet into if you want to take off your shoes and let loose. Absolutely beautiful in the back with beautiful materials. It really is a gorgeous, high quality place to spend time, as it should be given the $250,000 price tag and the fact that this is the top of the line Range Rover. But anyway, next up we move on to the front of the new Range Rover SV. But before I get into the many quirks and features up here, one rather interesting one is a different color. You can see the seats are brown, most of the trim, the materials are brown up here, but in back the seats were white or cream white, and most of the trim and everything else was cream white. The rear compartment is mostly white, the front compartment is mostly brown. <laughs> which is amazing. Not only can you deviate exterior colors and trim like on a lot of cars, but you can have the front and rear of the interior be different, which is a pretty crazy thing to see and not a common one. But let's talk through some of the quirks and features up here. Probably the biggest thing to note in the front area of the new Range Rover is that the goal was minimalism. Land Rover tells me they wanted to eliminate an enormous amount of buttons and switches and everything staring at you and making it complicated and confusing. They didn't want to have excess lines and style and flourishes all throughout this interior. They just wanted to kind of keep it simple and basic, but also elegant. And so there are a few ways that that's really clear. One good example is the climate vents, which you can see are just sort of in this line on the dashboard, rather than integrated in some cool way like some cars have, just basic and simple and almost hidden in that dashboard line. Probably my favorite minimalist touch in this interior is the climate controls, where you have these two climate controls wheels that serve several different purposes. In their natural state, you twist the wheel and it adjusts the climate control temperature. But if you pull the wheel toward you, you are now adjusting the fan speed and you can twist it and change that. However, if you're in that natural temperature changing state and you push the wheel in, you are now adjusting the heated and cooled seats by twisting the wheel once again. So this same little dial has three separate functions integrated into it, which allowed them to eliminate a lot of different other buttons and dials and keep it kind of minimalist in here. Same deal with the seat controls, which are mounted over on the door panel. You can see fairly simple seat controls and they include the seat memory buttons within them, which allows them to keep it minimal, keep it simple and integrate those memory buttons in a kind of cool way. But those aren't your only seat controls, of course. You move the seat with those controls for the basic functions, but you can do all of the rest of the functions in the center screen where there's a lot more opportunity to configure a lot more seating stuff. But by not including those controls on the door panel, they got to keep it relatively simple in here and integrate it into the screen instead. And speaking of the screen, let's talk through some of its interesting quirks and features because there are quite a few. One is the air purification screen. Take a look at it here. This shows you the air quality outside the car and then the air quality inside the car once it's passed through the Range Rover air purifier. And it shows you this in real time, constantly updating, letting you know exactly how pure the air is inside your car so you can watch it while you're driving if you're really concerned about that. Pretty crazy. And the air quality situation only gets more impressive. Tap on exterior AQI and the screen will display for you the current air quality index in your area, showing exactly the air quality. And it'll even tell you whether you should be wearing a mask or worried about pollutants or respiratory issues or whatever based on that air quality index. You can even tap on this little icon and it'll display pollutants, which is measured in some units. I'm not even sure what they are, but 
if you're into this stuff and if you know what to look for, you can see the current level of pollutants and decide whether you should be worried all on your Range Rover infotainment system. And there's more crazy quirks and features in this screen, including the tailgate event suite. Check this out. You turn off the car, open up the tailgate, and you can start something called the tailgate event suite, which will play music only through your tailgate speakers. So you can have like a cookout or tailgate or whatever in your Range Rover and have music playing back there. And when that's happening, you can control the music from an app that is offered with the vehicle. So you don't have to like go into the interior and change the song, it's all app-based and playing through your tailgate with the car off. It even shows the current battery level so you don't deplete the battery entirely while you're playing music through the tailgate and you can monitor that and make sure everything's good and you're listening to your music and you're not going to run out the battery all through this amazing tailgate event suite which is a fantastic idea in this vehicle. And there's still more in this screen. One of the amazing features of this car is something called wade sensing which can measure measure the depth of the water that you're fording in real time. Drive into a puddle or a river or a lake and it will tell you exactly how high up the water is coming on your vehicle to let you know if you're maybe getting a little too high and you should back up and turn around so you don't flood the engine or damage the car and that's amazing to see. And yes, this vehicle really is off-road capable. Land Rover says up to 13.1 inches of ground clearance, which is a among the very best. It can go over all the obstacles just like Range Rovers always have been able to, even though this one is unusually luxurious. And next up, another app in this infotainment system is a dynamic app, which allows you to track your lap times and your g-forces when you're using this as a performance vehicle. That's not all that uncommon in performance vehicles to see an app like that, but the crazy part is you also have this water fording depth meter. There probably aren't too many vehicles that have an advanced off roading system and app in addition to a dynamic lap timer and g-forces app in their infotainment screen that is pretty funny to see and next up another nice benefit of this infotainment system is the map which you can see is actually google maps if you want it like a google satellite image which is really useful for seeing exactly what's around you not necessarily just looking at a map i love having that there very nice very useful and reasonably easy to use as you can see just slide your finger around and it all works very quickly and very responsibly. And by the way, same deal in the gauge cluster screen. In here, you can also see the Google Maps satellite view, which is really helpful to see directly in your line of sight. Basically, you're driving along and you can look down and see exactly where you are in sort of a zoomed out satellite view, which is neat. And speaking of the gauge cluster screen, I absolutely love Land Rover's gauge cluster screen tech. It's excellent, fantastic, and tremendously configurable. You can use it to show all sorts of different views depending on exactly what you want to prioritize. You can have the gauges big or small or non-existent. You can show various different information, music, phone, the map, whatever it is that you want to see, you can have prioritized in this gauge cluster screen. And this is one of the very best of these gauge cluster screen technology systems in the entire car industry. Fantastic configurability that allows the driver to choose exactly exactly what they want to see and gives you pretty much any option you could want. But these are not the only two screens in this front seat area. The center screen and the gauge screen, there is another one and that would be the rear view mirror. Right now you can see it's a regular rear view mirror, but if I flip this switch it becomes a screen and then it shows me what's behind. The big advantage here is that you don't have to look through the entire vehicle to see out the back. Instead, you flip this switch and you have a full unobstructed view regardless of whether you have passengers or cargo in there blocking your rear window. It's an excellent idea and more and more cars are adopting it, including this one. A couple other interesting items worth noting. For one thing, the center console, open it up, you have this storage compartment and it's cooled. Not a refrigerator like what you have in back, but you do have a cooler up here to keep drinks cold, sandwiches, whatever you might want, which is kind of nice. Next up, another important item to cover up here. You can see on the dashboard, you have a speaker right in the center. It says Meridian Signature. This this Range Rover comes with a Meridian sound system that has 35 speakers. That is true. There are 35 speakers throughout the interior of this car. Unbelievable number and really an incredible sound system for Meridian 
inside this Range Rover. Also worth pointing out, another nice benefit is the driver assist technology in this Range Rover. I have been critical of my 2020 Land Rover Defender for not having auto steering, which so many cars are now offering. Well, this Range Rover has it. So you have adaptive cruise control that'll speed up and slow down based on the car in front of you. And now you have auto steering that will steer for you, especially on the highway. It'll go around curves and bends in the road. And it's pretty excellent, very easy, very usable. Now, a couple of points about the auto steering driver assist technology in this car. For one, the steering wheel is capacitive touch, which is excellent. That means you can just rest your hand on the steering wheel to let it know that you're paying attention rather than having to like jiggle it every few seconds to let it know that you're there, which gets really annoying. You can just leave your hand on the steering wheel and it will then know you're paying attention and do a lot of the rest of the driving for you. One drawback of this system though, it doesn't change lanes. A lot of these driver assist tech, you turn on the turn signal and it'll do a lane change, but that's not the case in this car. However, it does the next best thing. You make the lane change manually, and once you turn off the signal, the system automatically goes right back on. Some of these I've seen, you put on the signal and the system is canceled until you turn on again. In this vehicle, you can make the change, turn off the signal, and it's automatically restarted, which is nice to see. And finally, last thing worth noting up front, again, the materials are absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful leather, aluminum, everything, everywhere you look is just simply nice. High quality, excellent, really good stuff all throughout this interior. There's no cheaping out. There's no areas of crappy plastic or whatever. Everything is nice in here. Beautiful everywhere, beautiful leather. And on the subject of leather, worth pointing out that some versions of this new Range Rover offer a leather-free interior, meaning if you're very focused on animals, you don't want cows and cow hides to be a part of your Range Rover, they're offering versions now completely free of leather so you can avoid that if you want. But anyway, next we move around to the back of the new Range Rover where there is a lot to cover. And I'm gonna start with one of my very favorite things and that would be that the tailgate is still split, which has been a Range Rover hallmark for years. And what I mean by this is you open up the upper portion of the tailgate and it pops open automatically like in most vehicles, but you also have a lower portion of the tailgate which you can open up automatically as well. Then the tailgate is split into two pieces, which is very unorthodox. Virtually every other SUV has just one tailgate that rises up, but this one has like a clamshell two-piece. Now the benefit of this is you can sit on the back of this lower tailgate. It pops out and basically creates a bench which allows for tailgating and partying and hanging out the back of your Range Rover, and it's a great feature if you really do that stuff. Now, you might be wondering, does anybody really do that stuff? And I have to say, Land Rover certainly thinks so because they've built a seat into this tailgate. Okay, check this out. Pull up on this loop inside the cargo area and a seat back pops up, which makes it even easier to sit on your tailgate. Now you have a backrest as well. And if you lift up this little loop on the cargo floor, you have cushions under here that you can then install on your tailgate seat. And then you can sit here in comfort tailgating out the back of your Range Rover, which is a fantastically wonderful idea that I absolutely love. Now, it's worth pointing out that if you don't plan to use the tailgate seat, in the backrest, it can still come in handy. You can use it as a cargo divider to keep stuff from bumping into each other back here if you have fragile items in back. And you can even stick stuff inside these little straps in the cargo divider slash seat backrest to keep it from rolling around, like a wine bottle or something else that you just want to stay put. You have those straps where you can do it, which is pretty cool. Now, you can clearly see a focus on sitting back here, enjoying it, having fun in the back of your Range Rover. And that brings us back to the tailgate event suite that I showed you before. Look up on the top part of the tailgate and you can see the speakers back here which allow you to play that music like I mentioned and you even have little lights. You can tap the control next to the light to turn it on or off which obviously can be helpful at night. So there really is a surprisingly large focus on like using the tailgate and enjoying it for partying and having fun in the back of your new Range Rover. Now aside from that, worth pointing out that this cargo area fairly normal in size, reasonable, but one drawback of this four four-seater model is that you can't really put the seats down and have a fully flat cargo floor because that refrigerator is stuck in place in the center and these seats aren't really intended to like go down easily and make it incredibly practical. This is certainly not the version of the Range Rover you'd want to get if practicality was your main concern. But speaking of practicality, worth pointing out that Land Rover is now offering a Range Rover with three-row seating. This is
is a big deal because until this model, the Range Rover has only ever offered two rows of seats, but now you can get it with a third row to maximize your practicality. And of course, if you get that version, there's buttons over on the side, you can easily fold the seats down automatically, create a large cargo area, and that's the one you want if practicality is your goal. This is the one if luxury is your goal. And finally, last item worth noting in the cargo area back here, very cool, the rear tailgate closes all as one, meaning you don't have to close the bottom part first and then the upper part, just press the close button on the tailgate and then it all kind of comes together and closes, so you only have to do that one button push. In other words, you don't really lose anything by having the split tailgate design, but you gain some cool abilities that are kind of unique to the Range Rover. And next up, we move on to the overall design of the new Range Rover. The design, the style, which I have to say is a little disappointing. Not disappointing in the way it looks. I think it's beautiful, really gorgeous, but instead disappointing in the fact that it's not that radical of a change compared to the outgoing model. In fact, you see one of these on the street, the new Range Rover, and frankly, it just looks like a little update, a little evolution of the old one, which is kind of a shame. In the past, Range Rover redesigns have been major events with totally new looks, but that's not really the case here. This is sort of a subtle upgrade over the outgoing model rather than a totally new change. Now, with that said, there are some big differences and unquestionably the most noticeable is in the back. The taillights are kind of hidden in this black trim that you wouldn't even really know as taillights unless you see them on. It's kind of a cool look and it helps keep the exterior design minimal just like the interior. And in fact, that was one of the big goals Land Rover told me for the design of this car. Minimalism, simplicity, and elegance. They didn't want to add gouges and lines and extra styling just for the sake of styling like a lot of modern vehicles have today. They wanted a simple but luxurious, elegant design, and frankly, I think they pulled that off wonderfully. You can see the outside of the car, simple, basic, elegant, doesn't have a lot of fussiness or unnecessary details, which is nice to see in the modern era where those things seem to be standard on so many vehicles. In fact, the front grille is about the same size and maybe a little smaller than the one in the outgoing Range Rover. Everybody else's grills are getting bigger and bigger and massive. They look like they could eat you. This car, smaller, simpler, elegant, and I really like that. Another nice touch in that vein is the way the windows meet the body on the side. You can see there's no trim here. There's no weather stripping. They just meet, which most cars don't have. Usually there's some piece here, some trim at this meeting point point, but not in the new Range Rover. Looks very cool. Again, simplistic, elegant, minimalist. And next up, I want to talk powertrain. Now, this being the top of the line Range Rover model uses a big V8, twin turbocharged V8 that makes about 525 horsepower. Serious engine, serious power. And interestingly, this engine is borrowed from BMW, where it's used in a lot of BMW models, including like the 750i uses this powertrain. So it's kind of a flagship engine for BMW. And here, it's the flagship engine in the new Range Rover, but it's not the only powertrain offered. Now, the base level engine is a six-cylinder turbocharged, about 400 horsepower, or you can also now get a plug-in hybrid model. It uses that same six-cylinder, but with an electric powertrain as well for about 50 miles of pure electric range before the gas engine kicks in. Land Rover also says a fully electric Range Rover will be coming out soon, which I'm excited for. But for now, those are your powertrain options. It's also worth pointing out that all new Range Rover models come standard with four-wheel drive, and they all come standard with four-wheel steering as well, which should make them a little bit more maneuverable in tight spots, and it's kind of a nice feature that a lot more luxury cars are starting to adopt. And finally, I want to talk trim levels and pricing for the new Range Rover. The base model is called the SE, and it starts around $105,000, and you can add a lot of options from there, and most people are probably going to get that one. If you want more luxury, you can go for the autobiography model, which starts around $160,000, big money, but it adds a lot more luxury, beautiful, gorgeous version of this car. And then if you want even more, you can step up to the SV, which starts around $195,000. Now that's big money for any vehicle, but it gets even bigger here because those prices are for the short wheelbase, regular length Range Rover. If you want to go long wheelbase, the SV starts around $220,000 thousand dollars. That's this vehicle, and options can take
take it even further. Like that four seater package with the luxury rear seats, $20,000 extra, suddenly you're around 250 grand, which is the sticker price of this particular Range Rover. So it can get to really big money. And if you get the long wheelbase version, it's also a really big vehicle. This is 207 inches long, really huge. And it places this absolutely in the thick of the big full-size SUV territory, even though it only has four seats. And so those are the quirks and features of the new 2023 Range Rover SV long wheelbase. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the new Range Rover with the big V8. Okay, first thing to think about, talk about with this new Range Rover, um, it has the big thing that everybody wants from a Range Rover, which is that seating position. You have always felt driving a Range Rover like you were the king of the road, and this is that. You sit up high, this does not feel like some little crossover pretending to be an SUV. This is a high seating position, good, commanding, look out, see the world, think you're something when you're driving this car, and everybody loves that. Now, it obviously goes well beyond that, what people want from a Range Rover, and one of the things is a gorgeous vehicle. Gorgeous on the outside, gorgeous on the inside, and that's exactly what this is. The materials quality in this interior are fantastic. This is a really, really attractive interior. They've done a fantastic job. They've gone with minimalist, elegant, and they've done that to an extent. It's definitely not as swoopy and as, you know, over the top as some cars. Um, there's still a lot of stuff in this interior, but it really is a gorgeous interior with fantastic materials, absolutely beautiful. Now, I would expect that from this version, the SV, which is sort of the top of the line model. I haven't yet seen a regular base model Range Rover SE, sort of a $105,000, $110,000, $120,000 car. Haven't seen it yet. Not sure how the interior is going to look in that. I filmed a video with the new Range Rover about six months ago and kind of showed it off, and now I'm driving it. Same deal. Both were high-spec cars, so we'll see how this translates to a lower model. But in this vehicle, it is beautiful in here. So let's talk driving experience. You got the seating position, but do you have the driving experience that you would expect from a Range Rover? And the answer is... Yeah, you really do. Now, again, I can't speak to the other powertrains, but this V8 is so good. It is incredibly smooth. It is reasonably powerful. 525 horsepower is a lot, but this is a very big vehicle, so I wasn't sure if that would really be enough to kind of give it what it deserved at this price point, but it is. It's a powerful, nice, smooth, luxurious engine. It's been a while since I've driven a BMW with this powertrain, so I don't really remember how it feels in, the, in that car. I know they've made a couple modifications for Land Rover, one of which was air and takes are like higher up to make sure that if you go off-roading in Ford water, you won't get logged down in, in liquid. Um, but it feels great. It feels just really, really fantastic, powerful, excellent powertrain in this vehicle. Um, and it fits it perfectly, and it's smooth, and it's quiet, and it's kind of everything you would want. I see why Land Rover chose to go with BMW rather than developing their own V8 uh, just for this car and a couple others. But aside from that, you also have a lot of other Range Rover, you know, traditional experiences in this car in a lot of other ways too. It is quiet in here, it is luxurious, it is nice, it feels good. I don't want to start saying that it's a handler, it really isn't. You have the G-Force thing, you have the big power, but this is a massive vehicle. You're not gonna be able to throw around corners easily at all, you feel the weight. The steering is linear, the car is pretty balanced, but like, it's a huge SUV. It's not dangerous or anything like that, but it's a huge SUV. But with that said, I think the thing that people are mainly gonna be looking for in the new Range Rover is, if I put my foot down, does it deliver excellent acceleration? The answer is yes, great passing power, great on-ramp power, pretty much anything you could want, but also, it's just so nice and so comfortable in here. You just sit here and it just goes and you can just kind of relax and that's what it's good for and that's what it does. It's just kind of a fantastic cruiser, fantastic insulate yourself from the world luxury vehicle. That's what the last few Range Rovers have been great at and this one does a fantastic job with that also while simultaneously delivering excellent technology, great uh, horsepower and acceleration. It's kind of got it all except for the price point, which is absolutely massive. And so that's the new 2023 Range Rover SV long wheelbase. This is a great luxury SUV that has pretty much everything going for it. Great technology, beautiful interior, gorgeous exterior, fantastic brand name. Everything is great except for the massive price, but that's the usual trade-off. And now it's time to give the new Range Rover a Doug score. 
and the Doug score is here. 64 out of 100, which places the new Range Rover SV here against Rivals. Well, it's not quite a fair fight because the model I reviewed had the four-person seating package, which drops the practicality score a bit. With full seating capacity, especially now with three rows, the new Range Rover is immensely desirable, with gorgeous styling, fantastic technology, great performance, and of course, its excellent brand name. The drawback is pricing, which just keeps going up, but you gotta pay for the best, and that's the Range Rover.